Hi guys, welcome to a Blender tutorial from Blender Ignite. My name is Ryan Grzyak and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to animate color and transparency within the Blender game engine. Now I thought this was going to be an easy tutorial to do. I thought all you have to do is go in, animate the color, and you're good to go. What I didn't find, or what I didn't know, was that it was gonna turn out to be a lot more difficult than what I first anticipated. So this tutorial came as a result of that, and I hope you guys can learn a lot and begin to animate your objects within your game. Now you can see that in the Blender viewport, the object is animating, so both the color and the transparency, and it's just cycling through that. So what I first did when I started Blender up, I was like, okay, let's just animate the color on this cube. So I went over to the material settings and I found the diffuse and I thought, oh, let's just animate the color. And so that is pretty simple. All you do is navigate to a color, push I. You can see that the color is surrounded by a yellow border and it comes up with the keyframe. And so I thought that's all you have to do. But what I found is that the game engine can't use the diffuse color. And if you scroll down here, it cannot use the transparency, which I thought that that was a little bit weird seeing as all you have to do is add keyframes and you're good to go. So what I found is that there's a few extra steps involved and I'm going to take you through that right now. All right, so here I've opened up a new Blender file with the exact same cube and I'm going to show you how to add this and how it works. So if you come over here, just add a new material, you're gonna see that you start off with the default settings. And to set up the material for the Blender game engine, we're going to be using a special object called object color. And so to use this, what we have to do is we have to go up to the diffuse and we need to make sure the um, RGB is full white or values of one. And this is because the color actually refers to this color even when it's in the Blender game engine. So creating a blue tinge will stop the color from affecting the object. So I'll just turn this up to one here. And if you go down to object color and you check it, you will see that nothing really happens. You can still change the color, but it doesn't really give too much indication on what that does. And that's because the object color is in a whole new tab. So under the object up here, the cube, if you select that, you'll see that it takes you to a new menu. And if you scroll down to a tab or um, section called display, you will see that there is something called object color. And that took me a bit of time to find because it was in a completely different tab, which I thought if they were animating, you would have them in the material tab. But the object color is down here, and you'll see that it sort of acts in exactly the same way. So you can see that you can pull it to green or blue or pink or whatever color that you're wanting, and you'll also see that it has an alpha channel here. So that is very cool. So if we go back to the material setting, you'll see that checking that box on and off will activate this material color. And so if we just turn that off really quick, you'll see that if I go into the diffuse tab and I move this to a green color, and then I come down here and turn on the object color, you'll see that it turns it to a brownish color because the diffuse color is actually messing with the co object color. So that's why we make sure that this is pure white and we just let the object color um, affect the color and transparency. And to animate this, all we have to do is come down here and just navigate to the first frame, hover over this object color and press the key I and you'll see that the keyframes come up and you will see that here I have the graft editor over here and over here I have the dope sheet editor. 
and that is right here. And I've just come over here and from the dope sheet changed it to action editor. And that is because I want to change this name. I can come down here and click color. And that way it will name this action the keyframes that we're adding to it. So if we just travel down the timeline to frame 60, remember there are 60 frames in a second within the game engine. So if we come down to frame 60, we can come back to the object color, change the color, say to green, and we can maybe turn down the alpha to say 0.5. We'll just come over here and click I. You'll see that in the viewport, the color and the transparency will animate in real time. So I'm just gonna come over here to the object color, and if we come over to the game engine, when I push play, you'll see that it shows up in the game engine. And when we scroll down the timeline to frame 60, we should expect to see a bit of transparency here. So I'm gonna push play again, and you'll see that it's more like a darkish gray than an actual transparency. And this is because the object does not have transparency enabled for it. What we need to do is go back into the material section, scroll down to where it says transparency, and we just need to enable that, the Z transparency. You don't need to worry about changing the alpha channel because that will be done in the object color under the alpha settings. We can see that that is working great. Let's just go into the Blender game engine. Boom, transparency has been enabled. So that is very exciting. Working as we would expect, we could come to frame 120, change the object color to maybe a blue or purple color, take the alpha all the way down and hit I. You'll see that it lights up yellow and you'll see that new keyframes have been added. So I'm just gonna hit home on the keypad and that will expand those keyframes out. And we can see that if we go to frame one and we just Alt A through that, you'll see that it just changes the color and fades out completely. So how do we set this up in the game engine? Well, if we go to frame zero and we select the cube, we can come down under the sensors controller and actuator and just add an always sensor and we can come under actuators and add an action and if we just push this up a bit this timeline we can drag from the always sensor to the action sensor and just connect those up under the play we can select the color so that is the frames so this is the action here called color and it goes to frame 120. You'll see down in the timeline, 120. And so on the end frame, we can hit 120, and that should play us the animation. So we go back to the start, and if we just push play, you'll see that it cycles through that animation nicely, ends at frame 120, and finishes. If we want to have it repeat or I like to use ping pong, which means it will travel all the way to frame 120 and then ping or pong all the way back. But in order to see this work, we need to actually enable the true pulse so that it activates when we hit 120. So if we just watch that through, hits there, boom, back. And you'll just see it cycle to and fro. Now what if we only want transparency? Like when we hit I, we not only keyframe the color, but we also keyframe the alpha. And this is pretty easy to change. So if we come under the color tab, you'll see that we have R, G, B, and A. So RGB stands for red, green, and blue channels, and the A is the alpha channel. So if we just select RGB here, we can just delete them, delete those keyframes, and all we're left with is the color of the object and the transparency. If we cycle through this, the transparency goes from full to zero. So if we play that in the game engine, you'll see that it travels all the way till it fades out completely and then fades back. Now, what is another useful thing about deleting those keyframes? 
Well, it allows you to come under the color settings, no matter where you are. You can come under here, change it to a new color, say to a aqua green, and you will see that the only thing that's yellow is the alpha channel. So we can just change this and then, you know, come back here and push play. And you'll see that now it changes the color without us having to set a new keyframe, delete the previous keyframes. So that sets up really nicely and we can just do a dedicated alpha channel and not have to worry about the color. That is pretty much it for animating color and transparency within the Blender game engine. I hope you guys will be able to use this in your games. My name is Ryan Grzyk and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.